Good morning, it's Martin Chandler from Tech4. I'm the sales manager here, and I'm doing a follow-on video from my previous video, which covered uh, photocopier proposals and quotations, where I went into a bit of detail on what to look for and what the pitfalls are. I'm moving on to operating leases. Now, this is targeted straight for schools, school business managers and administrators who can access these guidelines from the Department of Education. But as you can see, there are quite a detailed uh, breakdown of what you should and shouldn't do with an operating lease, and I'm sure you've all read it. But I, what I thought I'd do is simplify things for you and let you actually look at a lease that is actually going to be presented to you by any salesperson or sales manager from uh, various companies out there. So the op lease document itself, first page, it should read education operating lease. Not a third party lease, not a finance lease. It should read as it says on the front page. Now these documents are fairly straightforward as far as filling in the details of your school, the equipment and the description. Important here, it does say new or used. School operating leases should be new equipment. You should not be financing secondhand equipment. And again, if we move down to the payment period, the term should be there how much the initial rental is and how many payments there, thereafter the lease runs for, either three or five years. Majority of uh, recommendations out there are between three, four and five years to spread the cost of the capital equipment. And again, you'll see a box here, maintenance charges. This is a key area because I did co cover this in the quotation part of my uh, previous video. That figure there, is collected by the finance company and then sent to the supplier who's maintaining your equipment. So you should have a breakdown of what's included within that separately on a service contract so you know exactly what you're getting, how many copies you're getting, if it's toners included, etc. So all that should be detailed because the finance company, all they're doing is collecting that money and sending it quarterly back to the supplier. So as you scroll down, as you can see, it's got to be signed by the correct person, either a bursar or a head teacher within the, company, uh, within the school. And the full details of the supplier should be in there as well. Interesting, the supplier's name would be Tech4 Office Equipment. The contact would be my name. If, I, if I'm selling you the equipment, my name should be there. My telephone number should be there and my email. So you've always got a route to go back to the company because you've got the salesperson's details. Lastly on this page, how do you calculate out the deal? And I'm going to go into that in the, in the next slide. But initially on the document itself, it says the price of the goods listed. So the guidelines out there are the recommended retail price. The, the equipment that you're buying should be no more than 70% of the recommended retail price. Now it's an aggressive marketplace. You should be nowhere near 70%. But however, that is the maximum that should be financed here. You can also see how the, the rate the finance company is working it out on. So it would be, if it was a 60 month deal, you'd be in the low 50s for the rate. So there'd be a figure in here that works out how much the capital value is calculated on per thousand, which works out your quarterly value. I'm also now just going to show you the calculator that we use to uh, configure the deals uh, when we're, before we propose them to you. This is a straightforward calculator. So all it does is, this is what we have to fill in to send off along, along with your operating lease to the finance company. And it breaks down exactly what's happening. So you can see capital value is 1,500 pounds. It's a one plus 19, so it's a 60 month contract. And you can also see the recommended retail price, the maximum being 70% again, uh, the value, the document rate, so the rate that we're actually using to work out the calculations, and the quarterly amount of £90.95. and pence. There's the important part. This is what makes it an operating lease, the residual value. So there is a residual value on that equipment of £114.85. pence. So we, as a company, have to send a credit note to the finance company for that amount of money. So therefore, you're not paying for it. 
we are actually agreeing at the end of the contract term we will pay £114.85 at the start of the contract. That's what makes it an operating lease. And you can see the net payment to the supplier, I only get £1,500 as per the agreement and as per the net amount to the supplier. That's an important document because it actually breaks down. Yes, the customer doesn't see it, but I thought I'd show it to you just so you can see how easy it is to calculate out. So if I change that figure, all these numbers would change. So it is us committing as a supplier to a residual value contract, which is what an operating lease is. I hope you found that useful. Moving on, all finance companies give guidance and they give guidance to the, both the supplier and the customer. Now, this is CF, CF Corporate's operating lease, which is uh, governed by the FLA, and it clearly states what you can and can't do as a supplier when putting proposals to schools. So you can include all products, photocopiers, MFD, desktop printers, interactive screens, covering a, a wide range there, visitor entry systems, we do our own one, the Tech 4 one, uh, fixed line telephones, etc., all can be using on an operating lease. Those are the things that you should be doing and those are the documents that you should be signing for when you're dealing with any of these products, including vending machines, etc. The programme guidelines are there in black and white as well. £25,000 maximum transaction value. So therefore, anything more than £25,000, you have to go back to the finance company and get special approval for that value. Maximum term, 60 months, one plus 19. You should be making sure that you are only paying a maximum of 20 quarters in a 60 month contract, or 12 quarters in a 36 month contract. And again, maximum invoice value, 70% of the uh, published recommended retail price for that product. That's the maximum amount you can um, put on an operating lease. There should be no suppliers commission included, so there shouldn't be anything loaded in there. No third party settlements. That's a big one. So if you've got an existing contract, you shouldn't be adding on to this agreement. The arrangements should be made. If you are having to upgrade your equipment, it should be set, paid out separately. Nothing to do with this agreement whatsoever. And the head teacher or the bursar to sign the document. The ability to increase advances in exceptional circumstances by prior approval. So you can change the type of lease you're, you're going to be signing up for, as in how many payments you pay up front. But again, that's in exceptional um, circumstances and it's not the norm. The guidelines, again, invoicing. A lot of schools can only pay by invoice now, so it should be done through an invoice. And if you can pay by direct debit, better for the school. But most, most schools have to pay by invoice. And the document guidelines. Deal value shown on the document is the gross equipment value. So that is what the value of the equipment is. That shouldn't be, again, including any upgrades or free copies or anything else built into the deal. Completely separate from this document. This document is the only one that a bursar or a head teacher can sign, this type of document. And there are a lot of finance companies out there pulling out of this marketplace because they've had their fingers burned by, unfortunately, the companies that try and abuse these systems by including upgrades and including free copies or iPads or anything else. They've had their fingers burnt, so they're withdrawing themselves from the marketplace. Thankfully, CF is one of the ones that are sticking with it because they have clear guidelines for us to follow. If you have any questions on operating leases, please feel free, give me a call at the office. Uh, it's Tech for Office Equipment in, in Carlisle. I'll go through these documents. I'm quite happy to share these documents with you. Because these are the types of documents where, if you're going to buy equipment, you want to know that the quotation ties up directly with what you're seeing on these documents and ties up with the service contract. I hope you found this useful. Uh, like I say, if you do have any questions, please feel free to give me a call at the office. Thank you.